Today marks two years since we up sticks and move back to my family farm. And despite having a farming and gardening background, boy, things have been challenging. From dying animals and horrendous weather conditions to absolutely hemorrhaging money. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. How much it has cost us to set up this farm. And at the end, I'll go through how we actually funded it and some tips on how you can do it too. So here on our farm in Suffolk, we've not only been setting up a flower farm and market garden, but also we love animals. And so we've also been dabbling in rare breed animals too. And so the plan therefore is to sell flowers, veg, breeding stock of animals, and then have a little bit of meat for our own consumption. So despite it being the family farm, the actual old farmhouse and all the buildings were sold off long ago. Which means our site when we arrived had absolutely no infrastructure. So a lot of the costs over the past two years have been putting in infrastructure and utilities. So one of the main things we needed to do was an office. So our Dunster Home office cost us £8,000. It has absolutely revolutionised being at the farm with a place to do admin, take a break, go to the toilet, get out of the rain. It's been absolutely fantastic. But what use is an on-site office with no electricity? So electricity cost us £4,000. And that included the official install from the power network and then running cables into both the office and the barn. So when we're lambing, we can actually turn lights on and we can actually plug in things like heat lamps and electric tools. Infrastructure like fencing is incredibly expensive. And although we would like to completely ring fence the entire perimeter of our property, that runs into tens of thousands. Now, as never being fence builders, I was happy to attempt internal fencing, but not external fencing. And so we had to have gates put into the entranceways to all of our fields and also our road connections. We chose to put a fencing along the main perimeter of the road and up the driveway just to protect our animals from being able to get onto the road, including our dogs. And we also needed to put up some security and privacy fencing because next door is holiday lets and we didn't want them looking into our farm all the time. So it was important to us to put up some privacy fencing and just make it obvious that this was a kind of a no free wander zone. So all in all, having the perimeter road and driveway fencing cost £5,000, having all the gates put in cost £3,000, and having the privacy and um, security fencing cost £4,000. And then of course, there's the miscellaneous extra pieces of additional gates and fences and bits of wood we've bought to actually do internal uh, fencing and structures. And that cost us about £2,000. About a thousand pounds has gone on miscellaneous electric fencing. We rotationally graze here and also stock fencing is so expensive. So we've fallen to electric fencing to do most of our animals, which includes the fencing itself, your expensive leisure batteries, your energizers, your grounding rods. So though we've picked up bits and pieces here and there um, on Facebook Marketplace, you know, a hundred pounds for some fencing, some secondhand fencing here, and then gum trees and more secondhand fencing. About £1,000 in all has gone on electric fencing supplies. Hello, quackers. I've allowed this little ducky to brave the attack of Mr. Fox and sit on some eggs. So we're just going to have a little check to see if there's anything underneath her yet. Hello, love. Can I look? Oh, oh, you're so, oh, you're super angry today. There's no babies. <laughs> oh, but we've got squeaking. And I can hear it moving. Well done. Looks like there are ducklings on the way. Hello. Oh, the sweetest, sweetest little lamb in the world. 
You just don't grow. You just don't grow for a baby orphan lamb. No. Dora is one of our little bottle fed lambs. Her mum did not want her. Um, but she is not growing. She's been wormed. She's been treated against coxidosis. But she's so, so tiny. Aren't you? And that brings me to another important farm expense, the dreaded vet bill. To be fair, farm vets, when they're coming to do livestock, are way cheaper than your dog or your cat and your small animals. Most also farm vets, if you know what you're doing, will just send you out the meds so you don't necessarily have to pay for all the farm veterinary visits. However, as you know, I rescued Peaches and Peaches cost me a fortune uh, trying to get her better at the end. Sadly, it didn't work. And so actually my farm vet costs for the two years have only been £1,000. And that includes medical treatment, for peaches, for example, having medicines sent out to treat infections and also having vaccines sent out so I could vaccinate the lambs and the goats, for example. Just down the road from us, there was a small holder that was downsizing and so we went along to his farm and bought a load of things from him, including a ride on mower, some IBCs, some barbed wire and stock fencing, a pig, a pig arc, some feeding troughs, some coops, and all of that came to £3,000. And then of course there's the animals themselves. However, in fact, this was probably the cheapest thing. For example, with the sheep, I've hardly bought any. I think I've only bought three sheep because many of them were gifted or bought for me or were friends sheep that they were looking to move on and I said I'd take them. The piggies cost me 50 quid each. And to be honest, it's mostly been poultry <laughs> that we've got carried away with. Uh, we went to the Melton Mowbray sale last year and spent about 500 pounds on chickens, pheasants, and some barnacle geese. We bought some, a turkey trio for 100 pounds. And then we bought some other chickens from another local breeder to kind of bump up our egg sales. So all in all, animals have probably come in at about 2,000 pounds. Another 5,000 has gone on things like animal food, water bottles, fencing, rat traps, lambing supplies, buckets, hurdles, security cameras, seeds, landscaping supplies like gravel, and plants. Things like pedigrees, paying for registrations of animals, paying for online breeder memberships, buying ear tags, um, all the little things that you don't think about and you just buy as a now, screws, new pieces of machinery, um, sc uh, screwdrivers, all of that adds up massively. So as I say, that comes in at about £5,000. As part of my husband's side of the business, he likes to keep birds of prey and he also has some ornamental pheasants. So we needed to build aviaries. Now these aviaries are beautiful, but we do not have the skills to build them ourselves. So we had to buy them. We also needed to hire a digger to do foundations and we needed to get concrete and mixers and things to do those foundations. So all in all, for all of the aviaries and the pheasantry setup, it's cost us 5,000 pounds. And then as I alluded to at the beginning, we up sticks, we moved and we moved up to Suffolk, but we don't have any buildings. Now suddenly in the UK, you cannot just move on to agricultural land in a caravan and start your business, which means we've had to rent. So I think actually this sum of money is important to include in the total cost, because if we could have moved on site, we could have just moved into the cabin, for example, or we could have bought a cheap caravan and lived in that. But actually to rent, we've spent 16,800 pounds. Now, of course, everybody needs somewhere to live. So that's not complete farm cost. But as I say, if we'd been able to move on site, it would have been a lot cheaper than having to rent somewhere for the past two years. In addition, you need to factor in the time and the petrol costs that it takes us going back and forth. 
obviously it, uh, we only live 10 minutes away from the farm it's not that bad but we're coming back and forth several times a day so probably there's probably about an hour's driving all in all by the time we've driven here and back three times that brings our grand total so far to 61,800 pounds and I actually think that's on the lower end of the scale because when it comes to feed costs and things like that I have probably spent a bit more now that is actually an insane amount of money for just the everyday person to have to start a farm and the only way that we did it personally is as i alluded to we sold our house we moved up here and instead of buying a house we rented and used the money from the sale of our house to plow into the farm here with the hopes that one day we would make it profitable enough to start earning now I totally get that most people can't even do that and it's really difficult to start farming. However, it doesn't have to be on this scale and we have cut corners in some places and cut some hard work to have things done for us. For example, did we need bespoke pheasant aviaries? No, we could have had pheasant runs much cheaper. Did we have to put in all of that fencing? No, we could have made do with no security fencing. We could have made do with no goat gates and maybe some cheaper gates um, just to start with. I've got an article on my website actually about how you can start a farm with no money and I'll link that below in the description. But as you know, from many YouTube farms, even if you've got a big garden, you can start, you can grow veggies in your back garden, depending on your country and the laws, you can start keeping some livestock in your back garden, chickens, quails, rabbits, and that's a great place to start. If you wanna scale up, there are many farmers that actually would like to make some money from a random piece of their plot that might actually not be that profitable. And so when you're driving around your local area, if you see fields that are just kind of left, um, they're never grazed, they don't have anything growing on them, they kind of just maybe topped once a year. Find out who the farmer is, go and have a chat and say, look, would you rent me this acre to set up a market farm? Would you rent me this acre to start a small sheep business on? Because in my experience, I've actually found that most farmers want to help. Most farmers want to help other farmers, they want to help people get started, they want to give people with the passion for farming a leg up. So in the majority of cases, even if one person says no, three other people might say yes. And if you want to see how it all started, check out this video, which is the move-in day for the very first animals on the farm two years ago.